So you know you've got an anti-orientation on both sides. You know it's more on the right. That's the right oblique representation. <laughs> Good morning, happy Monday. I have neuro coffee in hand and it is perfect. All right, coming off a great weekend. Looking forward to another busy week. Uh, 17 days out from intensive 14. So I'm starting to get excited about that. Um, so let's go ahead and dig right into today's Q and A uh, for Monday. Um, this is with Kyle and I talked to Kyle over the weekend and we emailed back and forth a little bit on, on a, a wide ISA client that he's having a little bit of a struggle with. Um, but we broke down a, a little bit about what the right oblique is. So let me just show you real quick on the pelvis. When we get a, a compressive strategy that, that somebody that is a, a wide ISA turns on a much flatter oblique angle. And so when they get pushed forward from the left side, you get compression, compression here, and then you start to see this elevation of the, the left side of the pelvis. So they're turning actually on an oblique axis. So it's much more oblique than if we saw somebody with a narrow ISA, that's a much flatter turn because they're turning on a, on a more vertical axis. Um, but we've, we've got the layered strategies on top of that as well that we have to, to manage. So, so the superficial con concentric orientation creates some, some interference as well. And so we broke this down with Kyle and then we talked about strategies for training um, this, this individual. So we really went kind of step by step through this. And then we also established a KPI for, for Cal to track things. So he doesn't delay people down on a table and measure them. He can just use some of his gym strategies to identify when he's making progress. So very useful for those of you that do not do table tests and spend your time in the gym. So if you would like to participate in a 15 minute consultation, please go to askbillhartman at gmail.com, askbillhartman at gmail.com, put 15 minute consultation in the subject line and we'll arrange that at our mutual convenience. Everybody have an outstanding Monday and I'll see you tomorrow. All right, well, video's rolling, clock has started. What is your question? All right, so as I uh, set you, so I have this chess board with one of my clients and yep. Um, I had the feeling that he was on the oblique axis. So I appreciate you confirming that over the email. Um, yeah. Now, um, from an intervention standpoint, I'm a little lost because initially, when I think of like someone being on the oblique axis, I think of um, bringing them back to the left. With Correct. Like a split but, squat activity. but you have a but. I have, I have a lot you have of a but in there, okay? <laughs> All right. So, so here's the dealio though. So he's on the right oblique. You're absolutely right. Okay. But there's a little, there's a little extra uh, addition here. Okay. When you look at the, the hip IR measures. So, so typically on a right oblique, if you didn't have anything else added on, you would see a lot of, of internal rotation on the right hip. Okay. You don't have any, which means that he went on the right oblique and then he went forward. So if you try to push him back on the left, as you would say for a, for a typical right oblique, what's gonna happen is he's gonna orient everything at the same time. So he is basically locked into one piece. He doesn't have his relative motions available to, to him. So if you look at the, the hip ER measures, especially, so you know you've got an anti-orientation on both sides, you know it's more on the right, that's the right oblique representation, and then you lost the hip IRs, okay? So, so one of the things that you're gonna see here is a lot of orientation into external rotation. This is why your flexion measures got magnified, because he shouldn't even have that much flexion based mm -hmm. on the fact that he has almost no internal rotation, okay? So you've got a proximal hip that's in ER, and then he's IRing as he goes down towards the floor. Okay, so step one is you got to bring him straight back first, recapture some of the ER and the IR superimposed, then make your turn. Okay, because like I said, if you make the turn too soon, all he does is all he does is everything just faces the other way. It's not the relative motions that you're trying to recapture. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know, so, so, so from a strategy standpoint, um, you got to create the, you got to create the, the delay on the right side. You actually have to create the expansion on the right side first, 
Okay, so that's going to be anything from, you know, anything that's ground based, um, you can use arm bars, you can use cross connects, you can use, I, I would roll this guy. So he's a, he's a, he's a good sized human being, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So he's a wide, he's a wide guy. And so, so when you see this, this degree of a forward center of gravity, when you see this degree of compressive strategy, where you're losing a ton of ER, a ton of IR, I, I roll these people quite a bit on their sides because the, the ground expands them anterior to posterior. It makes life really, really easy, especially when you're not like a manual therapist that you know typically can, can lay hands. It's a lot easier to do this stuff. Just roll them on their side. Right away, you're probably gonna pick up some, some ER and IR because of the expansion that you're gonna, you're gonna capture. Then it's gonna be a lot easier to move them backwards. Then you can do, like I said, your arm bar series. You can do like the uh, cable chops in a staggered stance, mm -hmm. things like that. Things that unweight him, okay? You wanna think about that kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, so you, what you don't wanna do right away would be like, um, you know, like a side split squat or anything like that where the, where the load is pulling him down. You wanna think about unweighting him. So the cable activities tend to be a better choice under these circumstances because they, they reduce gravity rather than adding to it. Right. And so then he won't be so overcoming. You'll capture the yielding actions a lot more easily under those circumstances. And then once you once you recapture that, you make your turn and now you're in split stance. Um, probably, probably going to be doing some form of front foot elevated kind of a thing again to create the delays. Um, and then same thing. His thorax is the same orientation as his pelvis is. Right, so um, heavy presses, heavy pulls, bilateral symmetrical activities, not, not gonna be the best choice for him right now, okay? Doesn't mean you can't train, just means you gotta be really, really selective with your activities, making sure that you're capturing turns and not just orientation. So that space between these scaps, you know, mm -hmm. you gotta move that back too, just like you're doing with the pelvis. But thankfully it's like, as you're using the extremities in the, in like the cable activities, you're gonna get some of that expansion, but um, you're probably gonna be looking at um, like something like a high low cable press in a staggered stance, things like that. Things that, like I said, you gotta turn them in a very small radius first. Okay. Um, another reason why I like the rolling because it is a very small radius turn, but we're getting the expansion with the floor. Does that help you at all? Yeah, it helps me a lot. One of my because one of my other concerns was that he's so he's um, like like we said he's a wide ISA. So when he does a lot of because um, you know we're training, we're not he's not coming to me like this hurts or anything like that. Yeah. He does get some aches um, in various places, but one of the things I notice is like he's going to do like a split squat or anything like that, and immediately he's like, yeah, like immediately, so, right. I'm worried about doing things um, that are going to just reinforce that. Like, understood, understood. Okay, so here's so here's what you can do. Um, number one, I wouldn't put him in in a in a front to back split squat. What mm -hmm. I would do is I would deviate him out and put him on a little bit more, like actually quite a bit more of a diagonal. Okay, he's mm -hmm. got that space available to him. What he doesn't have is the is the straight ahead. So so again so so um, you know like you ever done like uh, I don't know what they call it now, but we used to call them compass lunges, where you go like forward, you go to the side. So it's like north, south, east, west, northwest, that kind of thing. So he's yeah. going to be on a diagonal first. But what I would do is I would actually I would actually put him in that position. And then keep them fairly high, so so above parallel to the floor, kind of thing, like the bottom of the split squat. I wouldn't sink him down. I would put him in those positions, and then that's where I would start to do some of the superimposed stuff with with like the cables and things like that. What that's going to do, it's going to allow you to capture some of this this yielding action that that he doesn't have. You're going to start to to reduce some of the 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 posterior lower compressive strategy that he's using. So he's he's very concentrically oriented in that lower hip. You're going to start to expand that. And then use your split squat, okay? So you have a test retest. So you literally just told, told me what test is gonna be the best one for you. So when he doesn't have to do that, so when he doesn't have to brace and hold, right? Um, Cause he's trying to hold position because again, everything's gonna be this orientation. <clears throat> 
And then you just slowly, you, you take the stagger that looks like this and then you just slowly bring it in to where he's gonna do a normal split squat, okay? That's one of the advantages of the, of the, like the front foot elevated stuff is because it does create the delay and it does promote some of the turn. Um, so like I said, you're probably gonna go in that direction, but I would, I, would just, I would just deviate the split a little bit and then train them on that, on that angle for now and then see how that works for you. Because again, I think that you're trying to put him into a turn that he doesn't have yeah. And therefore he has to hold his breath to get there. Like literally he's twisting to, mm -hmm. to hold that front to back position. And in doing so, he is squeezing himself even tighter. Therefore there's no in inhalation, right? If you don't have inhalation, you don't have external rotation either. If you don't have external rotation, you have no space. If you have no space, everything becomes orientation. Yeah. Do, do you see how it just cascades? So let's so so find those positions that he does have the available range of motion. Chances are it's going to be slightly away from midline. It's going to be slightly staggered to start, and then you just build him out from there. Okay. So when you're saying it's wide staggered, would you still have that front foot elevated to to push him back over? Or I don't. Over? No. No. I, I I tend to not. It's it's really awkward. Yeah. Uh, uh, to do that, it's a lot easier when you when you when you start to bring that foot to the to the front. Then I would start start to build that up a little bit more because because you're already putting him in a, a fairly successful position by by creating the the uh, staggered orientation. Okay, because again, his ERs are out here. They're not in front. Like he doesn't have extra rotation in front of him. It's all out to the side. So let's just go ahead and put him there where he's comfortable, where he can access a position and then just slowly work him back in. It's kind of okay. like, like you, if you watch him squat and you, and you put him in a wide stance squat, he squats better than he does when, he, when he's in a narrow stance, right? Yeah. yeah, so the reason that he likes to do that is because that's where his ER is, okay? Yeah. So, and it's okay to put people there, okay? Mm -hmm. With the understanding it's like, okay, if we're gonna try to increase the relative motions, we're just slowly gonna work that in. But that's why these staggers work really well is because they are turns, okay? Yeah. It's just real subtle turns. But if you try to force him, if you try to force him into a position, everything becomes compensation. Everything becomes that breath hold, right? Okay. Now, if he's lifting heavy, heavy things, he's gonna hold his breath. Yeah. That's just, that's a, you understand that that's a given. Like anytime you load, you load somebody like that, they're not going to be able to, to, to breathe normally and they are going to hold their breath. Okay. So you take that into consideration as well, but like, this is a guy that can do suitcase carries. He can do sled drags. Okay. I would keep him in a sideways sled drag because that's where he's got the most range of motion available to him. Right. So you've got a lot of stuff that you can do in these in these shorter arcs of turn. And then you just like I said, you just build it out. OK. OK. Yeah. No, that that's super yeah. helpful. My yeah. So. Um, so here you go. So let's let's just go through. OK. So you got anything that's in a in a in a wide stagger. OK. So and again, that kind of looks like a sled drag when you think about it. Right. Um, sideways step ups. So he, he can step up to the side or at a, at a very steep angle. Um, you've got a, a like I said, the chop, you got the, the, um, the cable chops, you got high, low cable presses, you've got arm bars, you've got rolls. I mean, so you've got a lot of stuff available to you here. Just respect where his available motion is with the understanding that you're trying to expand him anterior to posterior so you can increase the amount of turns and then you can start to access that stuff that's straight ahead. Okay. Cool. Now, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Um, okay. I'm a little, I just, I'm curious about um, how, so you had mentioned in your email, I have it right here, that yep. you said he's um, ER proximally and IR yes. distantly. Yes. So I'm wondering how that plays into it. Is that something I should be trying to like fix or is that going to be just following suit with the so, rest? Of the so by increasing the anterior posterior diameter, so his ERs are way out here. Mm -hmm. So he's oriented. So he's, he's tr trying to turn his sockets that way and he's twisting the musculature in that direction. Okay. As you increase the anterior posterior di diameter, the orientation will, will adjust itself. Like he'll be able to access these positions in front of him and the stuff just, again, the only reason the twists exist in the first place is because he needs them. 
Yeah. Well, if you take away the need, then as you start to move the extremities through space, and he does have spaces in front of him, that that should start to to adapt itself, just like it got him there in the first place. Give him some place to go, he will find a strategy that will sort of undo that. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Excellent. You're very welcome, sir. Is there anything else I can answer for you? You have one minute and 15 seconds. <laughs> yeah, actually, I have a question that's been bugging me. Um, right. So I've heard you, uh, I've heard you in the past talk about the the lower posterior compressive strategies. Yes, sir. Um, and how they both happen in both archetypes, but they usually happen at different times. Um, yes. But I think you've heard, I've heard you say that it happens later with the wide than yes. it was with the narrow, but I'm confused yes. because 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 of the bias of the of the nutated sacrum and the wide that posterior lower compressive strategy um, is is recognized later. Okay, it's very very late in the in the in the sequence. It's sort of like the last thing that that because it actually it, it can actually bend the sacrum underneath them and create that that compression. So again, it's a it's a little bit like I said. It, 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 it'll, it'll occur late in both representations, but it is recognized a little bit more, more in the, in the wides because they are nutated. That apex is usually, um, ex, the, the, the musculature that's attached to the apex is usually um, not concentrically oriented because of position. And then as they get pushed forward, so, you, so your guy that we just talked about is there. He's pushed forward. And so, sorry. Um, he's pushed forward by that that posterior lower compression. That's that's why you got that loss of IR, especially on the right side. Okay. Yes. Cool. Yes. Awesome. Great Thank to talk you. to you, Kyle. Yeah. I got to run to my next call. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Have appreciate a good day. It. You too.